to carry out mass deportations. It's working on becoming a sanctuary enclave for migrants. Good afternoon. This is the KTLA 5 News at 4. I'm Samantha Cortese. And I'm John Finolio. The move would formally prohibit the use of city resources from being used for immigration enforcement. Not everyone is on board with making the city a sanctuary for immigrants. KTLA's Chris Wolf joins us live from downtown LA with more. Hi, Chris. Yeah, good afternoon, John and Sam. This measure did pass unanimously today, and it is now one step closer to becoming law, but this is just the beginning of the process. We are now hearing from both sides of this heated debate, this firestorm of controversy regarding the people who make up the United States. Immigration and illegal immigration are white-hot political topics, especially in states along the southern border. People are demonstrating in the streets as a wave of panic sweeps through communities in greater Los Angeles, for example, because President-elect Donald Trump is stressing border security and his plans to deport countless people who are in the U.S. illegally. Tuesday, L.A. city leaders took a significant step in defying Trump's position, unanimously passing an ordinance formalizing the city's status as a sanctuary city, officially blocking any city resources or personnel from assisting in federal enforcement of immigration laws. I think that it is most important to send a message to Angelinos, all Angelinos, and we are a city of immigrants that we are going to do everything we can to protect folks. City council members heard public comment before taking the vote. We cannot allow ICE or anyone else to target our immigrant communities and workers at our schools, places of worship, hospitals, or any other place in Los Angeles. Immigrant families are under attack and face the imminent threat of harm and separation. Trump has stated he intends to declare a national emergency and use the U.S. military in some form to help carry out his plans for mass deportation of undocumented immigrants. The L.A. GOP released a statement, quote, so-called sanctuary cities and states sound warm and fuzzy, but the protections they offer aren't for abuelas or grandmothers getting ice cream. They're for people who've entered the country illegally and committed additional crimes. Whether drunk driving, robbery, sexual violence, assault, or murder, none of those should go unpunished. Perpetrators should definitely not be protected by the largesse or generosity taken from hard-working taxpayers. Coming up in the next hour, we will hear from a local Republican leader. For now, reporting live in downtown Los Angeles, Chris Wolf, KTLA 5 News. Chris, thank you. Today, the LAUSD board is considering new policies to protect students from immigration enforcement planned by the second Trump administration. The board is also looking to affirm protections for LGBTQ plus students. School board president Jackie Goldberg is sponsoring four emergency resolutions to support those goals. Public schools currently are required under federal law to enroll any student within their jurisdiction. In California, school officials are not allowed to ask about their immigration status. However, President-elect Trump has promised mass deportations, and Goldberg says the district is ready to fight. I think that we know what's coming. They said that what's coming. And we want to tell our students and their families and all of our personnel that you are welcome here and that we will do everything in our power to protect your right to go to school or to work in this district. The resolutions direct Superintendent Alberto Carvalho to develop a sanctuary plan within 60 days. Mayor Karen Bass has announced a new program to help Angelinos who had been homeless stay off the streets. The program is called Career Connect. It's aimed to provide job training, support, and other services to those trying to get their lives back on track. According to the mayor's office, Career Connect has already helped more than 100 people secure housing. The next step is to ensure these people can afford permanent places to live through long-term employment opportunities. At the end of the day, it is obviously our goal to get people off the streets, but it's our goal for them never to return to the streets. And taking that step toward self-sufficiency 
begins with being connected with the job. Career Connect is made possible with the support from the U.S. Conference of Mayors and the Comcast Corporation, which awarded a quarter million dollar grant to that program. A suspected child predator picked the wrong kids to mess with in Temecula. They set up a sting operation that helped police make a quick arrest. Now, while none of the kids were injured, authorities say it was a risky and dangerous move. KTLA 5, Shelby Nelson is live in Temecula with this story. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Sam and John. Risky and dangerous indeed. And as you said, thankfully, nothing happened to these kids when they confronted that person here at this park in Temecula. But law enforcement is advising against it. One of the reasons being that you never know how someone is going to react when they're confronted. It sounds like an episode from the popular early 2000s reality TV series to catch a predator. But in this case, the people setting up the sting operation were a group of teenage vigilantes. Investigators with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department say the meetup happened at Nicholas Road Park in Temecula on Friday at around 4.30 in the afternoon. Law enforcement was tipped off that the suspect, 46-year-old Homeland resident William Vandenbush, was allegedly meeting a minor for sexual purposes. When deputies arrived, to that scene. Uh, there was probably about 20 other juveniles there. Many of them recording the encounter. Vanden Bush is accused of sending nude pictures of himself to the minor prior to that. He was arrested and booked on several felonies. It's good for the teens, but scary. At the same time. Moms Tamron Jung and Faye Houck find it alarming. They often bring their kids to the park, but there's also another aspect to this, the risk of confronting an alleged predator. I am a former teacher, and I would say that although I think it's admirable that they wanted to do this, um, I think the risk would outweigh the benefits for me. Not just kids. It's risky for anyone that decides to do this type of vigilante um, investigation. Sergeant Deirdre Vickers with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department says it's even dangerous for law enforcement, but they have the proper training. And for anyone who plans on conducting a sting operation like this one, they advised against it. You're catching someone at their most vulnerable time. Um, there's no way to predict what they're going to do, how they're going to react. And Sergeant Vickers says how the investigation is handled, how evidence is processed is all very important in this as well. And some suspects could be released on technicalities, so that's always something to keep in mind if and when people are planning on confronting possible predators. In the meantime, the DA is reviewing this case to see if they will file charges, and if they do, that suspect could be in court as soon as tomorrow. Reporting live from Temecula, I'm Shelby Nelson, KTLA 5 News. Shelby, thank you. Northern California is ready for rain. A bomb cyclone bears down in the Pacific Northwest with heavy rain and strong winds expected to pummel the region, bringing the threat of power outages and flash floods. The rain is set to begin midweek and linger for several days. This is shaping up to be the strongest atmospheric river of the season for the area. That rain will make its way to Southern California this weekend. Andy Reesmeyer standing by to talk to us about that. I Maybe not that much rain, but I am ready for some rain. We need it. We need Absolutely. It. Hey, what's an atmospheric river? Didn't you do a whole, <laughs> a whole thing on it? Yeah, we did. I fell asleep. It was super boring. <laughs> Basically, it's like uh, there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and it's all moving together. And so what you're looking at here, I'll show you on the map, is this low pressure system way behind me. And that right now is just basically in between the uh, border here from uh, the United States and also Canada. And what we're watching here is this low pressure system as it pulls down here into the northern part of California. It will.